different tribes and different nations have different capabilities. Physical as well as mental capacities and capabilities. Basing our observation on that, what's it not right in declaring that aliens are the superior race? Well, secondly, in South Africa, the Africans draw some justification from some of their holy book that black people are aggressive. Are the right or justified in believing and practicing apartheid? Apartheid? Yes. <coughs> or believing in different developments? Guru Sai Sai Nadine's divine? The Holy Quran answers this uh, rather longish question in just one verse. Jalna kum shahubum wa kabayla le taarafu inna akrama kum indallahi akhaafu that we have made you into tribes and various peoples only so that you could uh, know each other by those references as far as the best among you is concerned in the sight of Allah the best is only he who fears the most. So, superior race, the concept of superior race goes overboard with that declaration that the best in the sight of Allah is only he who fears the most. Now, that is a beautiful criterion because mental or physical capabilities which appear to be the criteria of superiority to worldly wise people is completely missing in this. Because even the most backward of human people, even the most uh, poorly developed among the human people, can fear Allah and excel, excel others, apparently superior people, in that uh, uh, attribute or quality. So, in the sight of Allah, he becomes superior. So, if there are spurious notions among people about the superiority of a certain race of people, as far as the religious religion of Islam goes, this is the set criterion and we do, do not care what people believe. As far as, far as the Tafir is concerned, it is uh, so categorically refuted and denied and rejected by Islam and uh, by that I mean by the Holy Quran and by the traditions and practice of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, the question just does not arise. You know the equality of Islam is in human values. This is why the whole system of Islam is based on those, that equality. So there is no question of any difference of race. So whatever doubt might have been left in anybody's mind was ultimately and finally and completely wiped out by the last sermon of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa on the day of the last judge, uh, the last hajj. And uh, there he made this declaration that I trembled under my foot. All those notions of superiority are one against the other of Arab against the Ajam and so on and so forth. The most, most beautiful, most forceful declaration of human equality and uh, human values. So, that is the last word in this system. Would have... Let us know about Khilafat and Shuddhi movements in India and the work done by Ahmadiyya Jamaat for the benefit and welfare of Muslims during the time when they were in need of help and guidance in that part of the world. This is a fun question. <laughs> and do you think there will be time left? After I have treated this question as it deserves to be treated, for any other question or for any other questioner to come? You have asked two, two important movements in the history of Ahmadiyya. 
Uh, one is Shudhi and the other is Khilafa movement and Jamaat Ahmadiyya's reaction to this. Now this subject is a very wide subject which covers a very important period in the history of Ahmadiyya and in the history of the Muslims of the subcontinent and their ultimate frustration and uh, disillusionment and how Jamaat Ahmadiyya took the right stance and work for the uplift for the Muslim cause and everything. All this is this relates to a very wide subject covered by many years in fact. And on this uh, some papers have been written and Tariq Ahmadi has covered these two questions amply and satisfactorily. So such questions are, as are found in our books in detail and which are of historic nature I think this is not the right forum for such questions to be asked. As far as Shudhi movement is concerned, <coughs> once I wrote a short uh, pamphlet and tried to put everything in a small gist form. And that I have got available here, Shudhi. And it's an interesting paper. I think it's also good for distribution among the non amadis uh, where is it? Who uh, is there? No. You know, the <coughs> there is uh, under one cover various pamphlets and small booklets which I had published during my tenure in Kurtfejadi, particularly uh, to meet the anti Ahmadiyya propaganda, hostile propaganda launched by the Madhudis. And one of the questions was about the Ahmadiyya role um, in uh, the subcontinent regarding important issues which concerned the Muslim nation as such. In one of those papers, there is one about Shuti. And uh, I asked them to send me the whole package and they have sent me some line somewhere here. So some of those papers could be republished, I think, and they should also be translated into some other languages. Nowadays, particularly, when they are uh, making the false propaganda about enemies being disloyal to the cause of Islam, Laudhullah and Ghali. So there are two good examples, Shulti and Khilafa movement and some other. Kashmir movement also is mentioned there. We'll find out. <clears throat> but thank you for the reminding us about this. You know, in short, I can just tell you uh, what happened. During Shuddhi, in an area in India, some Hindu Rajputs had been converted centuries before that time to Islam. And that area is called, because of the, their being uh, Rajput majority, perhaps the entire area is populated by Rajputs. That's called Rajputan. Those people were converted by some Darvishis who could not uh, educate them in Islamic ways of life. So, practically, as far as their culture went, they remained Hindu. All their behavior, their system, their meetings, their marriage ceremonies and rites, everything was almost Hindu. Yet in name they were all Muslims, they called themselves Muslims and they uh, performed the religious rites as Muslims. That is about death, about birth and one or two occasions in life. They required some mullah, some sort of ceremony was held. And marriages. So the Hindus thought it was a good occasion to convert them back to Hinduism. And they started a movement which was called Shuddhi movement to purify the ex Muslims and bring them back to the fold, uh, the ex Hindus and bring them back to the fold of Hinduism. When this news reached Kadyan by 